Hey, ProForum. This is uh, Curtis Hustis. I'm a photographer in uh, northern Illinois. I um, thought I'd do a quick video on uh, a real estate photography topic. Uh, I know a lot of people use photomatics and things like that. Um, I wanted to show you the tool that I found, and I'm probably sure that many people have found it, but just in case you haven't found it, um, it's a product called uh, Infuse, and it's a plug-in for Lightroom. So let me go ahead and show you. Okay, so Lightroom Infuse, um, the plug-in for Infuse is found here at the Photographer's Toolbox. Okay, so it's you can just Google Lightroom Infuse, E-N-F-U-S-E. -E. With the download, uh, you can download it for free, but it has restrictions to it. So my cat is saying hello. I don't know if you can hear me. It has restrictions to it, so um, you will eventually want to. You can play with it, see if you like it. Um, but to buy it, you have to donate a certain amount. Um, I think that the minimum amount is three euros fifty cents. Yes. So this plugin only cost three euros and fifty cents. So that equates to five bucks, I think. So if you're cheap like me, um, I lost my key to Photomatix, um, so I don't have a key to Photomatix anymore, and I don't know what in the world I did with it. And I can't find it. They can't find it. was so old. Anyway, I probably have to upgrade. It was under an old email that's not recoverable. So anyway, I went ahead and got this. I went ahead and gave them five euros just because I'm a nice guy, you know, so... Um, I felt like a big spender that day. So um, anyway, I donated five euros and got the plug. -in. So here we are in Lightroom. Um, Lightroom, I shot bracketed shots here. And so it's really easy to work inside Lightroom. So what I do is I take my bracketed shots, and these are this is my messy kitchen. If my wife knew I was using this for an example, she would kill me. But she's not home right now. So I can do what I want. And I am. So I'm taking a picture of the messy kitchen with the Jif peanut butter jar and everything and all the crud all over the, the, the refrigerator. So if this was a real estate photo, of course, I wouldn't want all that crud on the refrigerator. I'd want that turned off. And I'd probably, <coughs> pardon me, move the Jif bottle. Uh, I really don't want to touch too much stuff when I'm inside someone's house. But... Um, I would probably ask them to remove all that good stuff. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stack these five images in Lightroom. So I'm going to just right click here. I'm going to select the thumbnail that I want for the stack, which is that number three photo. So I'm just going to sit here and say, okay, stack, group into stack. And then I have my second group of exposures here, two through six. So I'm going to tell it to stack these two. Oops, wait. So I'm going to select this center one. I'm going to tell it to stack. Where is it? Stack, stack, group into stack. So now I have two stacks of this kitchen. And the reason I have two stacks of my messy kitchen is I was messing with the exposure. I have a Sony A7R2 which shoots 42 megapixels. 42 megapixels is an insane amount of pixels, and I don't need it for real estate. I don't need it for a lot of things. Um, I use it a lot for my still lives, um, so I can get uh, the detail in my still lives. Um, but that's why I like 42 megapixels. For everything else, I mean, if I had 24, I'm happy with 24. I'd be happy with 18. If I had my Nikon D700 or 12 megapixels, it'd be great. But anyway, so I, I, I downsized the sensor to, um, I have the choice of going to 18 megapixels and 11 megapixels. And so these are 11 megapixel brackets. If this were a super nice house and a really cool kitchen, I'd probably be shooting raw, full size, and then I would resize it in Lightroom and run it. But the smaller the file size, the faster it's going to run. So, as I said, uh, Infuse is a plugin. And so I go into Plugin Extras, 
And there's my Photomatix Pro. It's just a demo. I didn't actually buy it. I'm still using Lightroom and Fuse. So here's Lightroom and Fuse. So I'm going to tell it to blend the exposures. And so what it does is it does this kind of a similar thing. It looks for stacks. So um, I have stacks, and my cat is on my desk. Go. He's knocking everything off. Okay. So sorry about that. Um, I don't auto-align. That'll speed things up, too. I'm shooting on a tripod, and everything should be the same. So it shouldn't be moving. Okay? So if it's moving and it's on a tripod, there's an issue. Um, I tell it what to output to, where to output, and I tell it what I want it to output to. So even though I'm shooting standard JPEGs, I'm not manipulating the JPEGs. So... They aren't going to lose quality, so I'm not having output the TIFF, and then the TIFF file I will edit um, for exposure and things like that. So I have a TIFF. I've got the, op, the output folder, and I'm just going to go ahead and click Infuse Images. So now, after I click the Infuse Images button, <coughs> the um, Infuse is going through and uh, taking those bracketed exposures, each in its own stack, and processing them. So since I have two images and they're 11 megapixels shot on standard JPEG, this shouldn't take too long. And I'm not going to speed this up. I'm just going to let it run so you can kind of get a feel for how long it takes. I could sing, but I probably don't think you'd want me to sing. I mean... I know it's kind of slow here, but it's it's moving along. The first time I did this, I shot uh, 24 rooms, and I shot them all at 42 megapixels raw, and it took it an hour and a half to do 20, 22 rooms, I think it was. So there they are. Everything is done. Those are the infused images. So that was a lot faster. Um, if I were going to be doing uh, raw, of course, like I said, it would take a lot longer. Um, it takes a lot longer if you tell it to align the images, too. So you really want to uncheck that box, if at all possible. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two images and take them into develop. Like I said, I, I had two different exposures uh, with, with this um, bracketing. So one was five exposures at one stop, and then one was five exposures at a third of a stop, I think it was. So I just wanted to see what the difference was. So I still have some detail in the windows, and but I want to brighten everything up a little bit. So I'm just going to increase the exposure. I'm going to uh, decrease the highlights a little. Bump up the shadows a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to do my uh, levels in whites. So I'm holding down the Alt key to get this, see where I'm losing detail. I'll do the same thing with black. So I know that I'm getting some white whites and some black blacks. Clarity, I'm going to bump the clarity up just a hair. Um, I'm not going to mention vibrance. I'm going to go down to sharpening. I'm going to sharpen this for, uh, bring this up to about 50. And then uh, my radius down to 0.8. This is just me. This is not the, you know. And then I'm going to mask it, check the mask. I don't want it really to apply sharpening to the ceilings and stuff like that. That's just a plain Jane surface, just to the edges. So I'm going to apply my mask. Then what I'm going to do for the windows, I'm going to go into the windows. And um, before I do this, I'm going to zoom in on the windows. So I'm going to go to the windows, get my brush tool. I'm going to lower my exposure here a little bit um, just so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to auto mask for the edges. I'm going to bring this down. And then I'm going to turn the auto mask off. So I might spend a little more time on this um, than I'm doing here. It's still kind of hot outside, so I'm going to really lower this down a bit.
I might just leave this alone though, because uh, for some reason I'm not getting too much. Uh, that little right left window pane looks kind of blown out. I'm just taking out some of the stuff that bled over. So, uh, let me go into my highlights, reduce the highlights, bump up the shadows a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to mess with that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out, take a look. So I think um, so that's about it right there. So then um, I would export this um, as a uh, whatever my sizes I want for JPEG, probably an original size and one that's uh, restricted to a five pixel uh, box. Same process here. Um, I'm just gonna take a look at this window real quick. So I mean the 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 detail in here might be a little bit better on this particular window. But I'm just playing with this and uh I just thought I'd show you the tool uh that I'm using. And um you may decide to use it, you may not decide to use it. Photomatics does a good job too, um from what I understand. I have not really messed with Photomatics, so um you know, this is only five bucks, four bucks, something like that. Um, but, um, you know, I think it does pretty good results. Um, it's just uh, up to you guys, uh, what you guys think. So that's it. Thanks, y'all, and have a wonderful day, Proform.